Okay, Year 12, I'm going to make a quick YouTube clip on probability and in probability density functions. So, I'm going to just use this one here, just this top diagram here, to explain what's going on here. So, if we want to find <clears throat> probabilities under a probability density function, now remember that probability density functions tell us, or are a function that shows that must have the area under the curve equal to 1. And um, when we do this, if we find a part of that area, we can find the probability of that happening because it's a probability density function. So if we're looking here and we're looking at uh, this bit here, it says the probability of a value of x. Now it uses x because x can be any value. So this value here could be 3. And this might be 1 to 6. It might be the experimental probability of rolling a die. And if we calculate this area, it will tell us the probability of getting a number, a, a value from 1 to 3. So when we're looking at this, this is the probability of something. The prob geez, I'm having a hard time writing. The probability of X. Now, because <clears throat> the probability density function, that's that, this is the probability density function here, whatever that is, and the area must equal 1, well, the probability of anything in that is to find the area. And the area is the integration between whatever values they have indicated. So from A to B. So when we're finding these, we are finding the probability of something happen of a value by finding the area underneath a probability density function. And there's one other thing you need to know, and you need to make those notes. You need to just have this top one here, or go and look at the, the website to see what notes you need to make. The only other thing you need to know is here, for calculating the probabilities, you need to know this bit. Since P of X, or the probability, and P of B, it makes no difference whether we use equal to and less than or just less than. The probabilities are the same. So that's important. So let's go and have a go at some of these questions. So here we are. And they're the only notes you need to make so far. And don't worry about this. We'll deal with that later. So here we are. Here's our Here's a function, and we know this is a probability density function because the area, the area in here, well, it's 6 times 1 on 6, which equals 1. So it is a probability density function. So if I'm trying to find the area of things, so let's say I want to find for the value of 3. There's 3. I want to find the probability of getting a number or a value less than 3. So I can, I'm going to go the probability of a value less than 3. Well, I just have to find the area. Now remember... This is a rectangle. They haven't told us what the function is, but it's a rectangle. So it's just base times height. So I'm going to use this one here. It's a bit finer. I go, the base is 3 times the height is a sixth. So the answer will be 3 out of 6, which equals a half. And that's the first one. Now, the next one, between 1 and 2. So again, all I do, uh, there's one, that's a terrible line, do that again. 
I'm going to use this one. This one will be better. There's one. And there's two. And I need to find this area. Well, the area, so the probability of one to two, and I use a big X here because I'm not finding the function, I'm finding the um, probability. Well, the base of that is one, and the height of that is a sixth, so it's one on six. And you keep doing this. <clears throat> to find the probability, let's just jump down here to D. If I jump down here to D, and it wants the probability less than four. So let's say four is there, and I've got to find this area here. So for D, the probability of X being less than four. Well, that's four times 1 on 6, because we're just finding the area based on height, which is 2 thirds. <clears throat> now it says the area greater than 4, which is this area here. Now you can do go and do the same thing. You can go and go, all right, well that's 2 times, or you can just go, well it's 1, the probability of x greater than 4 is going to be 1 minus what I just found. 2 and 3, which is a third, because all the probability must add up to 1. You choose. You could have done it the other way and just gone 2 times 1 on 6 and got two on, uh, 1 on 3. Now the next one. The next one. So I've got this greater than... Uh, I've got this triangle here. And the first thing it says, well, find the equation that will make this... Thing, find the equation of this. Well, I'm lucky because I know the gradient of that line is going to be A. And the gradient is the rise, which is 1 over 5, and the run, which is 10. So A equals the rise, 1 over 5, divided by 10, which equals 1 on 50. So this equation is y equals 1 on 50x. So now let's do my probabilities. So I'm just going to get rid of all these. And do these ones. So I have to find the probability for 9. So I have to find this area here. And... At 9, I need to find how high it is. So I'm just going to get rid of that 10. So I need to find this height here. So, when x equals 9, y equals 1 on 50, oops, times 9, oh, 9 on 50. So now I can do the probability of x less than 9 because it's an area of a triangle. And I remember the area is a half, the base, times the height. And that's a half times the base. Well, it's 9 across, and the height is 9 on 50. So 81 on 100. Now, the next one. Less than 3. Well, I'll just do the same thing. The probability of less than, and I've used the wrong x there. It's going to be a big x. Less than 3. Well, that's a half times 3 times 3 on 50. You notice that I didn't need to put it in because I know whatever the x value, it's just going to be the x value over 50, which gives me 9 on 100. And I could keep going there. But what about greater than 5? 
So then, oh, well, I'll do between 4 and 7. So 4x, oh, sorry, 4x between 4 and 7. And let's have a look at this. If I'm finding this, it's the area. So 4 to 7. So I'm finding this area in here. Now, one of the students in class said, oh, that's a trapezium. Yep, you could use a trapezium to do that. And did it work? But I'm just going to use these triangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find... Um, the area of the pink and green together and then just subtract the area of the green and I'll be left with the area of the pink bit. So from 4 to 7 it equals a half, now I'm doing the whole triangle times 7, so the whole bit, that's the pink and green together, times 7 on 50 that's a big triangle, minus now just a green triangle, which is a half times 4 times 4 on 50, which gives me 49 on 100 minus 16 on 100, which is 33 on 100. So that's how you do those ones. To do x greater than 5, you've got an option, the same way you did up here. You can find uh, the whole, you can find 1 minus uh, 5 down to 0. So you can find, you can find this area, 5, and find this area and subtract it from 1, and that'll give you this area, because it all adds up to 1, or you can go the area from 10 down, minus 5 down. Righto. Let's have a look at what happens when we are actually given a function and we can't use our quadrilateral or um, triangular formulas for area. So again, I'm just going to get rid of all this give myself some space and we're going to look at this one. Now you can draw a diagram if you want but this is f of x so what have we got f of x this is question three f of x equals a x squared well that's just some parabola so I'm going to draw it here And we're going from zero from here to some point. No, not some point, to five. And that area has to equal one. So, well, we know how to find the area. We just go area equals from five to zero a x squared dx. And that has to equal 1. Now I'm going to use my bit of linearity or my law of linearity. That's just a number. So I'm immediately taking that out the front. So I've got a outside of 5 to 0 x squared dx. So 1 equals a. Now I'm going to integrate x squared. Well, that's x cubed on 3 between 5 and 0, and that means I have 1 equals a, well, I'm going to put 5 cubed on 3 minus 0 cubed on 3. Well, that equals 125 on 3 minus 0. Well, now I'm just going to multiply that 3 across and divide that 125. 
So I get 3 on 125 equals A. And that makes sense because I've got to have a very flat parabola for that area underneath there to equal 1. Once I've got that, once I've got that, my y equals 3 on 125 x squared. That is now, let's really care what we're doing, that is a probability density function. And off we go. We start answering the questions. Find the probability of x less than 3. So the probability of x being a value less than 3 in this function. Well, that's going to equal 0 to 3 of 3 on 1, 2, 5, x squared dx. I'm going to take that 3 on 1, 2, 5 out. And I'm just going to integrate x squared between those two parameters. So 3 on 1, 2, 5. That's going to give me x cubed on 3 between 3 and 0. I'm going to take that 3 out as well. So I'm going to get 3 on 1, 2, 5. I'm going to take the 3 out, so that's a third. And I've got x cubed, because I'm going to come back here. And that's going to give me 1 on 1, 2, 5. Now I'm going to do this in here. I'm going to get 3 cubed minus 0 cubed. And 3 cubed is 81 on 1, 2, 5. And the 0 just becomes 0. So I'm just checking uh, the answers here. So Oh, how ridiculous. 3 cubed is not 81. That's 3 to the power of 4. It's 27. 27 on 1, 2, 5. Now, we can go and do the next one. So P of X, what's it for? Between 1 and 4. P of X... Um, For 1 and 4. Oh, so we're just going to do the whole thing again. 4, 1, 3, and 1, 2, 5. X squared dx. And now, you can go and integrate it again, and again, and again, and again, and keep integrating it. One, two, three, four, five times. But we've already integrated it. We integrated it here. This is the integration. Imagine, imagine if we integrated this thing, this PDF, with no parameters. So three, on one two five x squared dx. Well, we get three on one two five x cubed on three plus some constant, and the threes will cancel, which gives me x cubed on one two five. Plus C. Well, rather than do that every time from now on, I'm just going to use that. So I'm just going, oh, well, that's, I can go straight to this. X cubed on 125 between 4 and 1. 
But I hear you say, what about the C? Well, if I had parameters in, I'd get a C in both of them and they would cancel out. The C cancels itself out. So I get four cubed on one, two, five minus one cubed on one, two, five. Four cubed is 64. One cubed is one, so we get 63 on one, two, five. And I don't have to go through the process of integrating again and again and again. And this is very useful. This thing here is very useful. And we're going to learn about it in the next exercise. So I'm going to show you now. It's got a special name. It's the cumulative distribution function. All right? It's the function that we get when we integrate and we can just sub it in. And because of that, we give it a big thing called, hold on, big f of x. Notice, and we use a big x or a little x. I think it's a big, I think it's just a little x. We call it, yeah, it's just a little x. And that just means we don't have to keep doing it again and again and again. And remember, it is called, this thing is called the cumulative, cumulative, distribution function. So you don't have to keep integrating again and again and again. Once you have it, once you have it, you just use it. So up here for question three, I could keep doing these questions just by using x cubed on 1, 2, 5. And I don't have to go through the process of integrating again. So keep working on those. I'll do one more. I'll do uh, number four, number five. I'll do three, five, three, five. So hit the, here's five. And it's a probability 3 to 4. Let's just double check, make sure we're right. Yep. So remember, that would be the integral from 4 to 3 of f of x. Oh, well, we may as well write it. We know what it is. It's um, 3 on 1, 2, 5 x squared dx but we don't need to do that because we know we know what it is it's x cubed on one two five between four and three so it's four cubed on one two five minus three cubed on one two five which is sixty four on one two five minus 27 on 1, 2, 5, which is 37 on 1, 2, 5. And that's a probability of getting a value from 3 to 4. Now, just make sure that you can do all those. And every time you do the first integration, write it as an indefinite integral what this is indefinite integral so it's an indefinite the indefinite integral of a probably probability distribution function it's a bit wordy the indefinite integral of a probability distribution function gives the cumulative distribution function 
which allows you to calculate the probabilities. So only do the integration once. And once you've done the integration, you're right. There is one more that I want to do, and it's question six. And then and you should have a go at it yourself and see how you go. So question six. It says show that y equals sine x. So I'm going to draw y equals sine x. And they want it from naught to pi. I'm just going to, there we go. There's sine, uh, naught to pi on two. There's pi. And halfway, pi on two. To show that this is a probability density function, I need to find the area from there to there. And it's y equals sine x. And it will be a probability density function. That will be a probability density function if the area from pi on naught to pi on 2 equals 1. Well, let's find out what it is. So sine cos, sine cos, sine cos, negative, negative. The integral of sine x is negative cos x. from pi on 2 to 0. So that's negative cos pi on 2 minus negative cos 0. Well, cos of pi on 2, here's the cos curve. Cos of pi on 2 is there. It's 0. So I'm going to get 0 minus, minus, and the cos of zero is one. Zero minus minus one is one. Therefore, this is a probability of density function. So now I've shown that it's a probability density function from naught to two. I can find the exact probability. So here we go. 6a, the probability of x, what do we go? Less than pi on 3. Less than pi on 3. Oops. Now, we've already integrated sine, and it becomes negative cos x. So this, that's my cumulative, up here, my cumulative distribution function. So I don't need to integrate it again. I'm just going negative cos x, because that's what the integration is, from pi on 3 to zero. Okay, so it's negative. Now if that negative worries you, you can just take it out. And that's what we might do. Let's just get it out of there. Let's get it out, because it's just a constant, and I'm just going to put it out the front. So now I'm going to get cos of pi on three minus cos of zero. I've got my negative out the front. Now, cos of pi on 3, there's pi on 3, that's 1, that's 2, that's root 3. Cos is a half, so that's a half, minus cos of 0 is 1, which gives me minus, minus a half, a half minus 1 is minus a half, and that gives me a half. I'm just going to check the answers, which I've got on right beside me here, and, uh, oh no, I don't, I don't have them right beside me here, I'm just going to get them, I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I'm just going to go to the textbook to make sure, you know, work solutions, what are we doing, chapter, Fourteen four. Let's go. Four o 
two, calculating probabilities, question six, five, six, and it's a half. So you can make sure you do all these. Um, the only other one that you'll probably have a problem with is seven. So no, you have to go on it. And if you're still having trouble, I'll quickly go over in class. Good luck.